my hand's gonna go strike down again, move away, and inspect and prove that there's only one playing card there. Yo, if you wanna learn how to do the slap change that I did in yesterday's video, this one. Do that, then keep watching. I'm gonna teach you in this video. I am Daniel Madison. Welcome back. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you choosing to spend some time with me today. I want to talk a little bit about camera tricks, camera trickery, trickery in filming and trickery in editing, especially in uh, magic and card magic and closer magic in the performance of magic itself as an art, as an act. This is a subject that does and will divide people. And it, I have to accept that that's gonna be the comment section of this video. And everybody's entitled. Obviously, everybody has their own opinion. Um, this is my opinion. And these are my thoughts and theories. Maybe you'll agree, maybe you won't. Maybe you have your own opinion. Maybe you don't have your own opinion and this will help you make your decision on whether or not it's fair. Maybe I can change your mind a little bit too because a lot of people, a lot of magicians, a lot of card magicians especially, consider themselves to be purists. What a stupid word, what a stupid word. These magicians who consider themselves to be purists will not partake, entertain, or participate in any kind of camera trickery or, or trickery on film or especially in the edit because they believe that magic, the, it, the pure magic is in the performance and delivery where everything should happen here live in front of the person. And it's an argument that's, that forks off into loads of different directions and spirals all over the place because it's, it's very political. Is that the right way of saying it? Maybe it's not political, but, but there's so many different if, ands, or buts. There's so many different different um, avenues that, that you can take each decision when it comes to editing. Now, let me let me let me clear my mind and start where I wanted to start. I'm a huge fan of Chris Angel and uh, Dynamo and other magicians in that area who who would practice and perform in the same way that they do. Not more so than Chris Angel. Now magicians looked and they saw Chris Angel and they all hate him. Magicians hate Chris Angel. It's a very strange thing that maybe the general public aren't aware of and don't understand. Um, magicians, card men, people in the magic world don't like him. And saying hate is very accurate. There's a lot of hate out there for Chris Angel, especially from magicians and from com uh, magic communities and magic um, groups and, and, and figures in magic, people in magic. And then Dynamo 2 for, for the same reasons, which we'll get into. Uh, I don't think the hate is too strong with Dynamo, but he certainly has very little amount of respect from magicians and from the magic industry which is a shame and I do believe that that respect for Dynamo is growing and growing and growing I don't think it ever will for Chris Angel because he's going to stick to his guns and mad respect to Chris Angel for that now here's one of the problems and here's what leads us into this conversation to begin with um, I've, I've spent a lot of time with, with Blaine uh, and he, the way that he works, the way that David Blaine works is like this. He will not perform anything on TV, on film, that he can't perform for you in person. So that when you see his things that he does on television, if you were to hire him for a gig, which you can do if you can afford it, if you can hire him for a gig, then he'll do everything. He'll show you the, everything that you've seen on TV. You can say, can you do this trick? Can you show me this trick that you did on TV? And he'll say, hell yes, here's a deck of cards. Let me show you something. Or maybe it's not playing cards. Maybe it's something else. But the point is he can do what he's showing you that he can do. Dynamo faced problems with this um, a few years back because he used to get bookings. He used to get big bookings and for a lot of money. And that kind of dissipated a little bit. And this is all just by my speculative um, opinion, a, a lot of it research, a lot of it from experience and from speaking to these people, but in terms of Dynamo, not in terms of Dynamo, with Dynamo, he, his bookings worked very differently because people would book him and they could afford him, these people, they booked him to perform at their gigs and they said, can you do this thing I saw you do on TV, can you do it now? And he'd be like, no. So they'd see him do these incredible things where he'd make 
you make buildings vanish and make people float. I don't know if you did those things, but but they'd a, they'd ask if you could do these unrealistic things. Whereas he would turn up to the gig and, and put a playing card in the middle, snap his fingers, and it'd be on top. Which is which ambitious characters can be a, an incredibly powerful thing. But compared to making a football float or making himself vanish and appear somewhere else, it's terrible. So the um, expectation from when people saw him on TV to getting, them, getting him to his parties was uh, was a mess because he couldn't do and he can't do in front of you what he can do in, on TV. He can do some of it. Obviously he can do some of it, but a lot of it is designed for TV because TV magic, and not just TV magic, magic on film, film which is magic in 2018, 2019, magic of the future, it's all on film. It's all on film. Where have you seen magic? Where do you go to see your magic? I certainly don't go to any theatres. I certainly don't go to any live performances. I don't see Ryan Trix or Troy or Dynamo or David Blaine when I walk to the shop. They're not on the street doing magic. I don't ever see them on TV. So we see a real life situation. What we're led to believe is a real life situation on television. So it looks as real as possible. We're, we're seeing things that we're used to, the streets, people, just real life situations. And then um, all of a sudden a magician comes along. So we see it on a screen. This is the point I'm trying to get to. It's theatrical. It is theatrical. I'm 100% behind Chris Angel and people like him because they understand how it works. I had an incredible conversation with Dynamo and, and Dan, uh, Dynamo's manager, maybe maybe a couple of years ago in, in London, met up with them with Ian Frisch. And, um, and, and the idea that Chris Angel, he can't do anything anything in front of you that you can do on TV because it's all designed for television and whatever words you want to use, how, whatever language you want to use to explain it and describe it. Most people call it fake, Most, you know, fake is a big word because it's not real but then magic isn't real. When you are with somebody on the street and you show them the car going in the middle and say as if by magic it jumps to the top, that's not real. So what's the difference between that and using camera editing? and using camera tricks. My argument all along, my argument is my life is my art. Life is my theater. I am the performer in this theater. Whatever is around me, wherever I am, whatever means I have, usually on film, a mixture of film and real life, these are my theaters. And it is my aim, my, my vocation, my ambition to deliver to you and to, to whoever's watching this show, watching the Madison show, whoever's watching it, it is my job to deliver an experience of magic, right? Why set limits on that with your stupid opinion saying that Chris Angel is, I hate him and he's fake. Why? Why? Uh, I have this, it's not an argument, I have this discussion with magicians who call themselves purists because they're not in his position and, and they want to be able to, I think the idea is because they don't have a TV show and they're not on stage, they're very limited to what they can do. They can't make somebody vanish, they can't vanish themselves and reappear somewhere else because all they have is a shitty little deck of playing cards. All you can do is put a card inside and make it appear on top and then you complain to Chris Angel when you see him doing something much more amazing than what you can do. Magic, the television, the theatre, the stage, this screen that you're watching right now, this is my theatre. I want to deliver you an experience that makes you question what was real and what wasn't real. I, w I, want, to, I want to provoke and spark a conversation about deception and the deceptive practices. I am a deception artist, I'm, my practice is deception, so when I do a camera trick or an editing trick, don't be surprised you idiot, and this is my job, I'm design, I, I design deceptions to provoke that reaction and to provoke that thought, I want you to question whether it's real or not, the whole thing is, is deception, so it's all fair game, I love Chris Angel, because he knows his theatre, he knows his theater, he uses his theater, and he plays his part in the theater that he's designed. And look at the size of that man's audience. Look at the size of his audience. Dynamo does the same thing. He knows his, and he, he knows and he understands his theater. He knows it. That's his act, that's his performance, that's his theater. So when it comes to camera tricking, 
camera tricks and editing is fair. It's absolutely fair. Absolutely fair. Because I get to watch this film, watch this video and experience a moment of wonder and a moment that questions me, wow, how did that work? Or, or just watching amazement, watching all oh, like, oh my God, that was, that was beautiful. Or that was brilliant. Or that was, it was okay. Either way, deception is the method. So why are we, why are we crossing T's, uh, dotting I's and lowercase J's? <laughs> why, why are we doing that? Deception is deception, end of story. Now, if your argument is because you're lying about the act itself or the magic trick itself, magic is a lie. The whole thing's a lie. Magic is dead. It is our job to convince the audience to believe otherwise by any means necessary. It's theater. It's theater. The whole thing's theater. Now, what made me think about this more than any other time was when Jabrizi, everybody attacked Jabrizi for using Stooges. And I felt sorry for him. And I, and I was ashamed of the magic industry because they don't understand or they didn't understand that that is fair. He's allowed to do that because it's his theater. He's creating a moment on film that we're gonna watch and be amazed with and come along for the ride. Yes, we love to watch magic on TV. We love to watch people react. We love to watch people react. All of a sudden after David Blaine specials came out, all of a sudden it was all about reactions. That's all any magic company wanted to see. I worked for Illusions for five years and it was all about the reaction whenever you did a live performance. You couldn't show a live performance on a trailer or on, on an advertisement unless the reactions were good, unless the, the reactions were strong. Some reactions are silent. Some people just sit back and they're amazed up here, but they don't show it in their body and in their, in their body language and in their man mannerisms, but they're absolutely amazed. But on film, it doesn't look good. So it doesn't work. So with Jabrizi, that's his right. He's allowed to do that. He's allowed to do that. And, and if, I, if, if I'm led to believe that these people he's showing magic to are real people who he's approached on the street, that's part of the deception. That's part of it. Some magicians can go out there and they don't need to do that. And, and that's okay, that's good for them. But in a world, in, in the magic world, in a role where it's demanding, highly demanding that we see reactions, that we see, and how good you are is based on how people react. It's a shame, it's a shitty way of living and that's not why we should do it. We should think about the people watching the end product, watching that screen, watching that digital wall. Are they entertained? Are you not entertained? If you're not entertained, you're not going to keep watching. If you're not entertained, you're not entertained. End of story. You want to be entertained, that's why you watch. We want to be entertained. It is a shame that, that it came down to um, the, the size on the reaction is the most important thing. And working for Illusionists for all those years, I dealt with daily submissions, people submitting tricks, and they would all have this same story. And they'd start with, oh, here's a trick where this happens. I've done this a thousand times. And the reactions are absolutely incredible. I don't care about your reactions in this email that you've written to me. I don't care about that. But unfortunately, the magic industry kind of led itself down that path because of David Blaine because David Blaine made it interesting and made it really enjoyable to watch people react and ask magicians, ask any magician out there, what's your favorite part of, of performing magic? And 90% of them will say it's the reactions, it's the way people react. And it is, we do this because we want people to experience something and for people to step outside of themselves for a moment. Now, if I can do that with video editing, if I can do that with a camera trick, or if I can do it without any of those things, it's all fair game. It's all fair game. This is my opinion. These are my theories. These are my thoughts. I have a load of other ideas on this subject that go in different directions, but I don't want to keep talking too much. And I want to give you all an opportunity to talk back and to give me your ideas. And I'm an, I'm an open-minded mother. I have a very open mind. So I'm open to, to have my mind changed and to think differently about it. But part of my expertise with deception is delivering you a piece of art. I see every single video that I make even this one to be a piece of art. That's how I consider everything that I do. In that, in that way, because of that mindset, I never do anything half-assed. I do a full, a full artistic job and an artistic approach to everything. So for me, it's fair game. As long as I deliver you a piece of art that makes you enjoy the deceptive practices, if I can do that, then I've, then I've done a good job and I'm happy with myself. So with all that being said, 
we're gonna move on, I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna teach you something. Yes, this is a tutorial. This is a tutorial after all that. But please, please, please let me know in the comment section how you feel about this subject. Whether you think it's fair or not. If you can maybe change my mind or open my mind a little bit in a different direction to why it's not right to use camera editing or camera tricks or stooges or anything. Bill Kalush, by any means necessary, up come quay. Thank you, Bill. But all this being said, what started me on the subject was yesterday I put a video up talking about my nine of clubs and to, to, introdu to introduce the video, the subject, I did a bunch of tricks that were, they were all editing, they were all editing, it was all camera tricks, all editing tricks and I want to dedicate the rest of this video to teaching you the moves that I did in that video so that you can do it yourself. So you can learn a little bit of deception yourself that doesn't have to be about 100% pure sleight of hand because I'm never going to meet you. Right, let's face the reality, I'm never going to meet you. The only you I'm going to ever see is a digital you. So maybe you can take this that I'm going to teach you, film yourself doing something like that and entertain me. If it all boils down to that one word, are we entertained? Am I entertained? If I'm entertained, I'm happy. That's all I want and I think I'd like to believe that's all anybody wants. And with a little bit of deception, I can entertain you. That being said, let's get to it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you an editing trick that's very easy to do. You need a camera, you need to be able to edit a little bit. You need a deck of playing cards. Let's get straight to it. So I hope the mic's okay because I've had to strap it to my, um, to my practice table. The idea is we're gonna take the nine of clubs and we're gonna strike it, I'm gonna slap that nine of clubs um, just like this. Now I'm gonna hold my body as still as I can, I'm gonna lift my hand up slightly like this, slide the nine out, slide the king in there, put my hand face down, hopefully my body is relatively in the same position. I'm gonna lift my hand up by about two inches and then hit down again. And then I'm gonna inspect the king as if it's changed. So now I'm gonna rewind this footage and the moment where I hit and do the replacement, I'm gonna cut at that point and then I'm gonna cut the middle bit out between hitting down on the nine and then slamming onto the king. And it looks like this. And we're gonna strike it. I'm gonna slap that nine of clubs um, just like this. And then I'm gonna inspect the king as if it's changed. Now the first part of this or the first moment is actually quite um, quite bad simply because my whole body's in frame so you see my head move you're gonna see my head move basically I'm gonna find the moment which is right here where I hit the nine and I'm gonna cut a little bit after that I'm using Final Cut Pro or Final Cut 10 Final Cut X whatever you want to call it um, across the board this should be relatively the same as Premiere Pro because it's very basic editing that I'm doing. I'm just cutting footage and audio. So I found that moment where I struck the nine and I put a cut just a fraction after that. Now I'm gonna find the moment where I, I replaced it for the king and I struck down on top of the king, which is there. And I'm gonna cut just before that moment and I'm gonna remove everything from between that. So when we watch that back, it's gonna look terrible. Like this. Just like this. Right, so now it's a matter of bringing those two moments together so that we can blur the hand going down on either side. So I'm gonna get really close into the timeline, slow it down, and I'm looking for the moment where the nine just disappears under my hand, which is right there where the audio bump is. So I'm gonna cut the footage, not the audio, just the footage right there. I'm gonna find the matching moment on the other side, which is I would say round about there just before the audio and again I'm keeping the audio because I want them to match. So now this should look not too bad, I'm not expecting this to look brilliant because my entire body is in there and because I was explaining it, 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 you'll see. So the bang itself, I'm happy with the bang. But if you look, my, uh, there's so much time between those two points that my, my entire body has changed shape. My head's in a different position. But if you focus on the hand itself hitting the card, 
times. Looks relatively fair. So now that we're much closer, it makes it a lot easier in terms of editing and the way that I film this because I don't have to worry about the position of my head or anything like that. The closer you get, obviously, the better or the easier, should I say, not the better. This is going to look its best from a distance. So if you can afford to do it by leaving your head in there and everything about you in there and you can get a clean edit, that's obviously going to be better. But to make this easier in terms of explanation of the way that you might want to practice this, it's easier easier if we're close, if we have a closed frame, the camera is much closer to the situation. Um, and once again, it's so easy uh, as long as you keep your hands still. So I've got the king and I'm holding it out of frame on purpose over here. So I take the nine, prove that there's only one playing card without actually saying, oh, look, everybody, I've got one playing card. Uh, a little bit of proof, just, just a matter of moving it around. Now, you can achieve this, this same trick in, in, with many different methods. One with the actual sleight of hand, there are a few, uh, a few different methods that I like to use. So the, the nine of clubs into the king of diamonds. So you can actually do this with sleight of hand, but the, the whole point of this video is to explain uh, a little bit of video editing, a little bit of camera magic. So, and also use black art. You can use black art. I've used black art in quite a few of my old videos. And black art basically means if, if this card is all black against a black surface, you can't see it. Um, so the nine is here, I put it on the table, the king is out of frame. My hand's gonna go down one. Now I need to freeze my whole body as much as I can. I'm gonna reach in, take the nine, put the king inside. Lift my hand a few inches, strike down again, move away and inspect and prove that there's only one playing card there. And, and just once again, like last time, I'm going to now rewind this video and show you this with the, with the editing taking place with the middle bit taken out. So the nine is here. I put it on the table. The king is out of frame. My hand's going to go strike down again, move away and inspect and prove that there's only one playing card. There. When my hand hits down, I'm going to cut right there. There I switch to king. Lift my hand up a little bit and just slam back down. And I'm going to cut the middle bit out again. So those two moments are brought together. As you can see, this needs a little bit of love and a little bit of work. So it's just a matter of, of trying to marry, to marry these two moments up perfectly. Now you can see just here, the audio seems to have lined up perfectly for the bang. I'm going to drag this part on the audio so that the bang continues from this side and blurs into the other side. Let's see how that looks. And it's gonna go strike down again. See, that one looks good. I'm very happy with that one, but there are a few more things that we can do to improve this. Let's watch this a few times. The king is the out nine. Of frame. My hand's gonna go strike down again. The king, even with the audio and explanation, it sounds like it merges well together. There's a, a special effect that I really like to add in here, which which lends itself to the nature of banging the table. So I'm gonna go quite a few frames in, about 20 frames in and cut. So I've got a section just here and I'm gonna search for the earthquake effect. And I'm gonna drag earthquake onto the moment just after the bang so that this moment of footage is really shaking and vibrating after the bang. So it kind of feels like when you watch it back, I've hit the table so hard that it causes the camera to shake. That's one of the biggest deceptions in this, in, in the video that I posted yesterday, the actual performance. It looks like I'm making the camera shake. In fact, it's just a special effect. Now the reason I put it only 20 frames in the, the earthquake effect is because I want to fade out. So I'm going to go over to transitions and, and, and choose the most basic cross dissolve and drag it onto that moment. Now I'm going to ease that in into a linear and I'm going to, I always choose film too. So it's a film transition and we only need to ease it out. So I'm going to ease it out. Now what this does in this space of time, you hear, you see the bang, the camera starts to shake. And then at, at this point, the shake completely stops. So it looks like the camera is just wobbling a bit after I hit the table. So we'll watch this a few times. Here's what it looks like. King is out of frame. My hand's going to go strike down again, move away. And so this perfectly hides the bang in two different ways, in three different ways. One visually, obviously, because I managed to hide the two moments in the move, in the motion of my hand doing this. 
The second one is the audio. The two bands align perfectly so, and, and one fades into the other so it sounds like the same band. And finally the shaking camera hides everything and the shaking camera effect fades out as we get to the end of here and by the time it's gone uh, no one's any the wiser and it looks all good. My, my hand's gonna go strike down again, move away and inspect and prove that there's only one playing card there. Now to a lot of people watching this they, they might feel a little bit disheartened or a little bit strange about the idea that these kind of things happen not just on YouTube, not just on these kind of films, I mean, in my work, but in everybody's work who films magic. To a certain extent, there's always deception beyond deception. Your idea of deception and what kind of deceptions happen in uh, TV, in theater, in the world of magic that's captured on film, in performance. There's so much more going on than most people even realize. Even magicians are, are so naive to it. When you, when you spend time in magic on TV and film, the way that I have over the past 20 years, you become completely exposed and open-minded and aware and and you, you end up adapting naturally to the idea that nothing's off limits because you realize uh, from going through it and from doing it and from trying to perfect it and trying to master the craft of deception on film, you realize that nothing's off limits. The, at the end of the day, all that matters is what's on that screen. Is it entertaining? Does it entertain? Is it a spectacle? That's the word. That's what it comes down to. Is it entertaining? Yes or no, by any means necessary. It is a very good practice for magicians to be able to do in real life the tricks and the deceptions that you can do on film. So it comes with a warning. The caveat is if you are going to trick the camera, if you're going to use camera editing and video editing and nothing more, then you're going to end up a bit like the story I told earlier on in this video where you might get booked for a gig and you can't do anything that you've shown people that you can do. For me, everything that I can do on film, there's a way to do it in real life. In terms of theatre, if I work on something that's theatrical, that's for, for drama, for the sake of the entertainment, then it doesn't make a difference whether you can do it in real life or not. For me, my work, my artistry is digital. It's film, it's all on film, it's a video. You're, you're hardly ever gonna see me in real life. I do like the idea of leaning into the soap theory with this and, and the dirty b theory with this in terms of, in terms of you know, people might watch my videos and think, um, it's all for show, you can't do that in real life. But for me, the people who have said that to me and, and accused me of that, some of the biggest names that I don't wanna name drop, have once I've sat down with them and showed them, they take their, they take it back. Uh, it happened with, in the biggest case, happened with Ernest by Madison. People said that I was all talk, and I got trashed for that for doing that. And the people who who were so quick to trash me online on Facebook on the socials, uh, so many people trashed me without watching the project, and then. A few weeks pass and they all watch the project and come back to me and apologize and, and show a different attitude. It's easy to jump on the bandwagon when we see someone like Chris Angel or Dynamo and we're not happy with their camera, camera trickery and things like that. But once we understand it, we learn to appreciate that as an art form itself. We appreciate it as a different level of, of deception. Deception itself is the idea of, of using these artistic techniques to create entertainment, to create a spectacle, to create something that someone can watch and appreciate. And like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm very open-minded to this subject and I'm looking forward to some interesting conversations that surely will happen uh, in this video, in the comment section to this video. Thanks for being here, thanks for watching. And if you film anything like this, that's been inspired by this video, that uses editing and uses camera tricks, I'm waiting to be entertained. I'm waiting to be entertained. Please share it with me, please show me. Um, and I'm excited to see what other things people can come up with, with this idea of using deception for film and for using a deception for film as theater, as an entertainment within itself. The deceptive practices are fair game. Oh, come quite by any means necessary. I am Daniel Madison. See you next time.